Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning. Thank you and welcome to the Valder Beebe Show. I'm your host, Valder Beebe. And today I have great guests for you as I do every day. I have Dr. Keita Franklin, Dr. Kelly posner Gurton Harbor, and they're here to talk about September is Suicide Prevention Month. Welcome, ladies, to the Valder Beebe Show. Grateful to be here. And Thank welcome, you. doctors. Okay, uh, let's start with you, Dr. Keita Franklin. Uh, you want to talk about why is it so important for people to talk about suicide prevention? Sure, you know, every year, September is Suicide Prevention Month, and so we like to push out as much information as we can about the fact that suicide is preventable, but really, we should be having these conversations all year because it's, it's, it's the second leading cause of death in the nation for young people ages 10 to 24. And so just really continuing to raise awareness uh, helps reduce stigma. And I know Dr. Posner likely has something to share about this as well. Yeah, the good news is there is hope, there is help. Suicide is preventable, but it's this tragic paradox that takes more firemen than fire, more police than crime, more lives than, than car accidents. You know, 135 people are affected by every death, and these effects linger across generations because of the silence that often follows and that stigma. So that's one of the first things we have to break down, that stigma and that shame. And how do we do that? We do that by normalizing the conversation by asking, did you know that 50% of people who die by suicide have seen their primary care doctor the month before they die? We should be asking the way we monitor for blood pressure and do that well beyond the doctor's office. Dr. Gerson Harbor, since you made that comment, yesterday in the news, uh, a high-ranking, uh, I think, campaign official of President Trump. Now, this is not political, but this is this is on a wide scale that people can relate to this. He was accused of uh, going to commit suicide, and it didn't seem to be anything his wife can do. What do you do when you're in the midst of that situation? And notice you said, you know, accused. And that's the thing, the stigmatization of this, when these, these are issues that touch everyone. You know, depression is its biggest cause and it's a treatable medical illness, but we don't think of it like we think of cancer. And absolutely, his loved ones, his family, you know, we have to ask questions because people often suffer in silence, but they want to get help. And that I always say that guy who goes up to the gun counter to buy that gun to end his life does not want to die and does not know there's help. And spouses and family members and teachers and neighbors are the first most important line of defense against this. Because when you ask, somebody feels cared for and you can connect the right people to the care that they actually need. I'm so glad you brought Dr. up that Dr. Franklin. Example. Coming back behind that, beyond screening for suicide risk, what else can individual communities do? Because um, Dr. Posner said before they buy that gun, those people who sell guns, I've never bought a gun, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe if you know, when they go to buy a gun, the only thing they screen for, their background, if they've had any problems, that kind of thing. No one says, oh, he looked kind of stressed, he was sweating a lot, I don't think we should sell him a gun. That doesn't seem to be a choice when you do those kind of things. Yes, absolutely. You know, people are sometimes afraid to talk about suicide risk and firearms in the same conversation because they worry that it will become a political conversation or that it will in, impact somebody's, um, you know, First Amendment rights or, or, or the like. And really, it's not about that at all. It's about keeping people safe. And so if people were to go to a firearm establishment or a, a, a gun store and want to buy a fire, firearm, there's no harm in the person um, selling the firearm, uh, asking the question, how are you? And how are you doing today? And what brings you in? And, and just kind of trying to check in with them. Are you okay? And th there's absolutely no harm in that. It doesn't get in the way of the sale. And, and there are a number of things that we push in the suicide prevention field around firearm safety, like um, storing weapons separate from ammunition and, and just making sure that there are safe practices when it comes to all things related to firearms. It's a really good question. And ask directly. Thank you so much for that answer. Yeah. Dr. Posner, ask, would you like to weigh yeah, in? Yeah, and, ask, and <laughs> ask directly. So that that guy at that gun shop counter does not want to sell the gun who's, to someone who's gonna, gonna hurt himself or, or anybody else. So he has a tool with the Columbia Protocol that if he feels he needs it, he can help get somebody the, 
the care that they need, and that's what we we all we all need to be doing. And once again, uh, since you mentioned the Columbia Protocol, Dr. Posner, could you just give us a little bit of what that is, so my audience can have something to hang on to? Sure. So um, the Columbia Protocol or the CSSRS is a few simple questions that anybody can ask, teacher to janitor, doctor to lawyer, that helps us figure out who to worry about for the first time. We didn't know who to worry about before and nobody knew if they, they could ask, they didn't know what questions to ask, they didn't know what to do with the answers, and they didn't know if it would be harmful. It's the opposite. When people are suffering, they actually want help. So we have a website, CSSRS, Columbia.edu. There's an app. You can just look up the Columbia Protocol to help save a life. Dr. Ke Keita Franklin and Dr. Kelly Posner, Gersten Harbor, I thank you so very much. And I thank you for being women who talk about this. And I think that resonates a lot with people when women say something, because we do have power. So thank you for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. I really appreciate it. Grateful. No, thank you. My phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.